Hello everybody, this is Zoe from No Safer Place and today I'm here with a video that I'm so excited about and I know that I say that about almost every video but this one I'm particularly excited about. If you guys have been following my channel for a while you will know that I have been obsessed with the Folio Society which is a bookish company that has the most beautiful limited edition, collector's editions, just the most stunning books you will ever see. You know how I love my books. So I've reviewed quite a few of them in the past and I thought, you know what, I'm going to reach out to them, ask if they want to do a collab, and they did. So they asked what book that I wanted and I chose one that I have wanted for so, so long but hasn't been in stock and it finally was and it's a book that I've been wanting to read for a really long time and that book is Phantom of the Opera. Now, the parcel just arrived, I've opened the contents, I just expected there to be a book in there. But there was more. So let's have a look. The first thing they sent was this super cute tote bag which just has the Folio Society on it and on the back it says love books love folio and the next thing is this super cute diary which I may do a giveaway for because I already have this exact diary from ordering from them recently and it seems like such a waste for it to not to go to someone who loves books as much as I do so I may do a giveaway of this it also came with this super cute notebook. Now, you guys know how much I love my stationery. Just can't resist a good notebook. And now, the part that you're all here for, the book. It came in this protective wrapping. Comes in this most gorgeous slipcase. I love this colour. It looks amazing. As you can see, it says The Phantom of the Opera. So satisfying. Oh my god. How beautiful is this i've obviously seen pictures but oh my god it looks so much better in person how beautiful is that the edges it's sprayed edges oh my god i just love the color scheme of it i'm just absolutely obsessed with this how stunning is this now they are pricey and this one is 50 pound but it's just so worth it because they just look so beautiful. I think this is my fifth version now of a Folio Society book and I've not been disappointed with any of them because they're just beautiful. But yeah, this isn't an unboxing today. What this actually is, is a reading vlog. That's right. Today, I'm going to attempt to read the entirety of The Phantom of the Opera and I'm going to share my thoughts along the way. I've never read it before. I saw the musical for the first time this year and that was just a few months ago. So I'm really in The Phantom of the Opera hype right now. And I would love to see how the story originated and, and what it was actually like before it was a musical. So that is why I chose The Phantom of the Opera because not only is it beautiful and will look amazing on my bookcase, I really wanted to give it a read to see if I enjoyed it as much as I did the musical. Now I know that this book was written in 1909 so a long time ago now. I do tend to struggle with classics so I think it will be interesting to see how much I enjoy this in comparison to the musical and how difficult I find it to read. I know a lot of readers claim that they adore classics and if you don't enjoy classics you're not well read but I don't care. The only classics that I really like are Dracula and Frankenstein. And I guess The Phantom is a little bit horror-like, so I'm hoping I will enjoy it as much as those. Let's get comfy on my bed. Let's get reading. I will share my thoughts as I read. If there's anything in particular that I find exciting or that I want to share, I will let you know. Let's get reading. I'm kind of comfortable now, so let's get reading. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Like before we've even started just fence, I don't know if this is just me being really dumb and the forward is just like a part of the story. But I always thought that a forward was like an introduction pre the story and this kind of says that it's real and based on a true story. I don't know if it's like to set the scene or something like that but now I absolutely must research this once I finish the book because that just seems insane to me. Anyway, let's get reading properly. Chapter 1 
right so i've just finished chapter one and already the scene is just like perfectly set and i'm already terrified of the ghost to be honest they're not calling him the phantom yet he is just known as the ghost and i've got to say the descriptions are like pretty damn harrowing i found one on page 13 that i just wanted to read he's tremendously thin and his coat hangs on a bag of bones his eyes are so deep set you can't hardly make out the pupils which never move in fact all you can see is two great big black holes like sockets in a dead man's skull the skin is stretched over the bones as tight as a drum it's not white but a sickly sort of yellow he's got no nose to speak of you can hardly see its side on and the fact that there's no nose to see is the most horrible sight three or four brown strandy wisps across his forehead and behind his ears is all he's got in the way of hair. I mean, how freaking terrifying is that? Harrowing, I tell you, harrowing. I was gonna film like loads of clips of me reading, but I feel like if I do that, we're gonna be here all day. So I'm gonna stay in this position, keep reading. If there's anything to report, I will let you know. Christine is in the house and we've just had our first kind of glimpse and hint of the Phantom and how Christine has ended up with this most incredible voice. If you don't know the story of the Phantom of the Opera, it's basically this woman called Christine and she has been in the opera before but she's not like a leading lady or anything and in the space of six months she becomes this almost angel and has this most incredible voice that just blows everyone away and we know as the reader that the phantom has something to do with this and that is the point that i'm just at now we've just been introduced to christine and her incredible voice oh my god i love this on this page it says Paris is one huge masked ball and I love that because if you've seen the stage production there's a song called Masquerade and one of the lyrics is Masquerade, every face a different shade, Masquerade and that just really reminds me of that line. I think it's so amazing how songs are written and they're just so perfectly in tune with the book. I mean this is probably the first time that I've seen a musical before I've read the book and it's just really insightful. I love seeing how all of the songs were made and which particular quotes from the books have been taken and made it into the songs. It's just amazing. Oh my god, so we've just been introduced to the Angel of Music. Now if you've seen the stage show you will know that the Angel of Music is another name for the Phantom and I have to read this quote because oh my god it's beautiful. Those who are visited by the angel blaze with a fire that never stops burning. They experience a thrill unknown to the rest of mortal kind. They are blessed for they never pick up an instrument or open their mouths to sing without producing sounds whose beauty puts all other human sounds to shame. Those unaware that such fortunate individuals have been visited by the angel say that they have been touched by genius. Little Christine once asked her father if he had heard the angel. He shook his head sadly, but then his eyes lit up as he looked at her. But you, darling girl, he said, you shall hear it one day. When I'm in heaven, I'll send him down to you. I promise. How friggin' beautiful is that? Oh my god, I love this book. I've got to say, it's a little bit wordy and you really have to concentrate when you're reading it, which I know sounds stupid because you should be concentrating when you're reading. But I'm a really quick reader and I don't really take all of the words in. I usually like skip a few words. I don't know if other people are like this, but I'm not like someone that studies every single word. My husband is one of those people. That's why it takes him <laughs> so much longer to read a book. But with this one, you kind of have to read like every single word because it's very wordy and obviously it was written over a hundred years ago, so it needs full attention. Oh my god, so I've just got to the chandelier scene, which is on like page 103, and if you've seen the show, the chandelier scene is like one of the most pivotal moments when the chandelier crashes, and it's just monumental to watch. To read the infamous chandelier scene and how that translates onto the stage is just amazing. Oh my god, I have to pause again. The descriptions of Christine singing in chapter 10 just i can't even describe them they're absolutely indescribable they're beautiful they're mesmerizing and you can almost feel and hear her singing you can just feel that magnetism of her voice which is just absolutely incredible seeing as you're obviously just reading a book it just feels impossible to get that kind of feeling from a book but here we are this book is magnificent so far it is so much better than i was expecting i really thought that i would struggle getting into it and reading it 
but I think the fact that I was already familiar with the story um, has made it a little bit easier. Okay, so we can now kind of see what the Phantom is doing to Christine. Like the fear and the love that is being forced upon her by him is just becoming more apparent the more we're getting into the story. And I've got to say, when I saw the musical, the first half was pretty light-hearted, but the first half of this book is not like that. It is much darker and much more intense than the first half of the musical. Oh my god, chapter 13 is called Apollo's Liar. And chapter 13 is what Phantom of the Opera and Music of the Night was quite clearly based around. Let me tell you, it's as equally terrifyingly beautiful on the page as it is on the stage. If you haven't seen the stage, so Phantom of the Opera, the song, is him kind of introducing Christine to his lair and his world for the first time. And Music of the Night is him then convincing her to stay there with him, with his kind of magnetism and how good he is at manipulating people and let me tell you chapter 13 shows that so so well and in the middle of chapter 13 there is this most amazing illustration like how beautiful is that horrifying but beautiful oh my god and then on page 165 is the revealing of his face it's when his mask comes off for the first time Holy shit, the descriptions of him. The musical is just so, so accurate. Like, I was expecting the book and the musical to be, like, really different, but so far, it's so similar. And they just give off the same kind of haunting yet hypnotising and brilliant vibe. Like, wow. I am just in love with this book. I've been reading for, like, an hour and a half and I'm already, like, halfway through, so I feel like I will be able to get this done today. gone a while I have been just completely transfixed in this story like the deeper we get into the book the more I'm just falling in love with it chapter 23 has just begun and Christine is now the prisoner of the phantom and there to be married absolutely not her choice by the way and we're getting to kind of the real crux of the story now let's just say he's full batshit crazy he has gone absolutely mad He's quite literally losing his mind. You can kind of see his mind unraveling as you're reading his thoughts and his ramblings and it's just brilliantly done. <laughs> okay, I'm right near the end, like 20 pages before the end. <laughs> but I've just read a quote and it's so harsh, but yeah, I can't stop laughing. This is obviously about the Phantom. Should we feel sorry for him? Should we damn him? All he ever wanted was to be like everyone else but he was just too ugly. <laughs> wow. I think it's pretty horrifying that they're quite literally saying that he was treated this inhumane way and the way that he was just because of his appearance and maybe if he wasn't so ugly, they would be a bit nicer to him. It almost makes you sympathize with him. Like I know he's a lunatic and he takes Christine prisoner. I mean, if society is treating him like that, is there any wonder that he's turned out the way that he has? In the show, I really had no kind of sympathy for Phantom because although they said that he was scary and a bit horrifying, they never said like, oh, he was just too ugly. Maybe if he wasn't so ugly, we wouldn't be so horrible to him, which is kind of what they're implying here. I'm so near the end now. Let me just finish. Look at these beautiful pictures. I mean, how stunning are these illustrations? I haven't shown you them all, but there have been so many throughout which are just beautiful. I've just finished. I do have a lot of thoughts. I can pick the camera up now because I do have a free hand. I don't have to hold the book anymore. Um, I feel like I didn't really discuss the story in that much depth because I feel like a lot of people are already familiar with the story. To sum the story up in short, Christine is visited by the Phantom. He gives her lessons and trains her to have this most magnificent voice. In return for keeping that voice, he wants to take her and make her his wife. But in the meantime, Christine is falling in love with someone that she knew as a child and has finally come back into her life. And kind of the whole damsel in distress, it's up to him to save her kind of thing, which is a little bit cliche. But what I love is that the love story between Raoul, which is her childhood sweetheart, and Christine really 
is irrelevant so it kind of really takes a back seat which is kind of unusual in a book that is this age so I did love that and yeah I think it's absolutely amazing I'm gonna put this back down now where it was because I don't want to have to hold it I'll admit after having seen the musical and reading the book I do prefer the musical but I think that's because you know me I love singing I love songs and I really think that you can immerse yourself in it more I honestly think that I perhaps would have struggled a little bit more to follow the story and with the language and some of the dialect because obviously it was written over a hundred years ago so if I didn't already know the general story it may have been a bit harder for me to follow the fact that this was written over a hundred years ago and is still so relevant and incredible today is just mind-blowing to me I think the part that stuck out for me which is strangely the part that stuck out for me when I saw the show is when the Phantom takes Christine to his lair for the first time it's just so magnificent and so immersive just the descriptions in the book are almost as beautiful as seeing it on the stage which is just wild to me I will admit I mentioned earlier that some of the parts I was just like skipping over some words I am a skim reader and I do skim read sometimes and as it is very wordy I did feel myself doing that a little bit more especially because nearer the end I just really wanted to know what was going on so I was just trying to read it like quicker and quicker but yeah I am guilty of that um but saying that I have finished it in a few hours and as I said at the beginning of the video I do usually struggle with classics and I didn't struggle with this anywhere near as much as I usually do. I found it as easy to read as, say, Dracula, which is actually my favourite book of all time. Which makes me feel like Phantom should definitely be in the horror genre. I definitely think that because the tension, the atmosphere, the descriptions, the kind of horrifyingness of it, it should be classed as horror. Definitely in the same vein as Dracula and Frankenstein. And what I will say in terms of the Folio Society edition is that there's not as many pictures as there are in some of the other editions that I have. In Jurassic Park there seems to be pictures all the time and there weren't too many in this but I feel like because the book is just that incredible at describing the scenes and setting the scene maybe you don't need them but yeah I do love pictures. I mean I've just turned to a random one here and just look at it they're just they're just stunning. Whoever illustrates these books are just incredible. I definitely, definitely loved this book. It was even better than I thought it was going to be in terms of visually and reading it. I mean, the back cover is definitely my favourite and it just screams phantom to me. There's also like a sense of achievement when you've finished reading a classic, I think because they're so much harder to read than normal books, especially as I usually read YA, which is just so easy to read and fast paced. Yeah, I would highly, highly recommend you read that book. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you, because you have been here for a long time. If you want to get your own copy of Phantom, I will leave it in the description box below. Would highly recommend you get it. And it does sell out quickly, usually. So treat yourself. It's the new year. It's 2022. Buy yourself a copy of Phantom. As it is 2022, what books are you reading this year? What is on the top of your TBR? I would love to know. So please let me know in the comments below. I have just bought 12 books from Waterstone, so I have a lot of reading to do. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, subscribe, all that usual good stuff. Also, you can turn on the notification bell to be notified when I upload new videos, which is usually once a week. I will try to stick to that this year. Hope you all have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you would like to see more of on my channel and I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. Bye.